uh, it's all new to me, Andy. Okay, so it's uh, uh, first meeting of our property subcommittee. Um, Richard Aquadro, chairperson, board of trustee member. And um, we're going to figure this all out. And so bear with me. I'm a little unprepared. Andy sent me some info. I couldn't open it. I can, I can watch. Yeah, so Andy will walk us through that. Dr. Lucy Hooker. Um, so let's do a little recap here. Financial update. So, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Just to give everybody a, a heads up of why we're here today. Uh, we all know the fire and uh, since the fire, we have Tim here. I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about the insurance background and some of the financial impact that we have right now. A lot of the hurdles. <coughs> uh, our goal this afternoon is to bring all of us up to speed, get some input uh, to prepare for the full board meeting this evening. Uh, to hopefully come to some type of consensus of what the best option is moving forward. There's, there'll be three different options that we'll talk about this afternoon in the potential rebuild and rebuilding, uh, and what each path looks like in the implications of each of those paths. And uh, we just thought, as an administrative team, we thought it'd be very important to get the board uh, involved at this early stage to give us some direction as far as what path we felt was most comfortable with and what path the board felt most comfortable with. Uh, so not only do we have the subcommittee members, obviously we have Crystal to give us a lot of financial background, Tim obviously in the audience, um, the two big key members are the two instructors down in horticulture. So uh, I can't thank both of you enough, um, Mark and James, for uh, the amount of work that you've been putting in since the fire, uh, the initial claim that we have to put forward for the insurance company, just lost the loss of equipment and trying to inventory all of that, I know it's uh, a tall task. So both of you can been charged with that. Uh, both of you were charged with trying to develop an initial wish, wish list for the community, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit this afternoon or this evening. And uh, obviously, those two, two individuals should have, I believe, should have some input as far as what this option is that we want to pursue in the rebuild. So, thank you for looking uh, So, with that said, yeah, I, I did present, uh, provide sort of a, a, a brief outline to help walk us through this afternoon. The outline that we'll walk through is actually in my superintendent's report this evening. Now, uh, thanks, thanks to technology, if there's any edits this afternoon, I can update and then we'll be prepared for this evening when I can share all of this to the full board. So, what Rick was talking about that first slide, for those who have packets in front of you, uh, it's just a financial update. I just want to give uh, the subcommittee uh, sort of that mile high version of where do we stand financially. So, the first one is the insurance. What are we insured and what are we insured up to? So, the building is insured up to $1.5 so whether we get the full one and a half million or not, I'm not quite sure. I'd be leaving that Tim. Tim's the one who's been dealing with the insurance agents and lawyers and so on and so forth. But technically, we are insured to one and a half million. The equipment in the building is insured up to 238000 Now, it is our understanding that we will submit the, the claim. We are just talking about Mark and James with the homework assignment as far as all, all the things that we've lost. Once we submit that, once we do get the insurance money, uh, we will get the check for that insurance claim. It will not be involved in us having to purchase new equipment, submitting the, uh, the receipts or invoices and get reimbursed from the insurance company. We will get that check up front. How we deal with that check is up to us, okay? which plays into the donation initiative that we've been undertaking. So the more donations that we receive from the public, the more donations that we receive from other entities, which we'll talk about in a little while, the more we can earmark the insurance money from the equipment towards either more equipment and or the building rebuild, okay, if that makes sense. And finally, under the insurance, uh, again, I can, I'll lead on Tim if he wants to comment. Uh, right now, the building that is still physically still standing there, uh, we do have to take it down at some point. We are waiting to hear from the insurance company to give us approval to knock down uh, the damaged part of the building. That's why it's still standing there. So a couple of other revenue sources. One is the, the Active Skills Capital Grant. Uh, this is some communication I've had with the Executive Office of Education. Uh, the State House, basically working under Secretary Pizer, they want to help us out. Uh, so they asked us uh, what would it take to at least replace the zero-turn mower that we lost in the fire. So in, in working with their office, 
We have a current skills capital grant that is currently out there. We have a current contract that is for our automotive department. So that makes life a little bit easier. So the Executive Office of Education can amend our current contract with automotive, i.e. adding more money to the contract, so that we can purchase that zero term loan. We are in the midst of doing that. Uh, so I got some emails back and forth this afternoon. We have a quote uh, from a vendor so we can get our hands on a zero term loan ASAP uh, once the State House gives us that official approval, which I'm anticipating an email sometime this afternoon. Uh, so once they give us the money through the current skills capital grant, we can then submit the PO, we'll get the zero term loan uh, for the public culture program. So that's another revenue source, again, saving on the back end as far as uh, using the insurance money. And finally, the, the donations. I'll share the spreadsheet this evening at the full board, but just to give the subcommittee an idea, uh, and thank you to Deb, who's been detailing every single donation that's been coming in, every single shovel, every single uh, rake, every single check, every single gift card. Uh, just looking at the monetary value of checks and gift cards, as of right now, we've received $9,350, which is great. Uh, so. Uh, we'll have that at our disposal as far as how, how do we want to figure out to get purchasing and replacement equipment and or the potential rebuild. And I'll share the, the entire spreadsheet up on the big screen this evening. So that's kind of where we are currently at with some of the financials. The next slide that I prepared continues the financials and it talks about two upcoming skills capital grants that again working with the Executive Office of Education uh, these are two potential grants that we want to apply for uh, to assist us with the horticulture building. So the current one this just opened up this week, and uh, the deadline is July 13th, which is a very quick turnaround, especially when we consider the, the end of the school year is next Tuesday. Uh, a lot of our admin team will be working the rest of the fiscal year, uh, so it's going to be a very tight turnaround. They are issuing awards between one and two and a half million for this current grant, which is a much larger grant than they have typically uh, offered in past skills capital grants. The main difference with this grant is we could apply some of this grant money to facility upgrades. This particular grant would allow us to appropriate up to 30% of the grant towards facility upgrades. Again, the Executive Office of Education, that's the EOE in my notes, uh, they really want us to push this towards horticulture. They really want to help us out. The problem is it's going to be a very tight turnaround for us to apply for the skills capital grant in horticulture. There's a lot of legwork, a lot of homework that has to be done. And I'm not I'm quite, I'm being honest, I'm not quite sure we can get all of that done by the July 13th deadline. With that said, conversations with, with their office, uh, I've shared with them the vision that we have around campaign animals. I've uh, shared the vision around that we need to renovate the former DCC building. We need to equip that particular building for campaign animals. We were going to earmark some tuition of all the money for that particular project. Could we hypothetically apply this skills capital grant <coughs> to containment animals, which allows us to renovate the GCC building on the grant dime, not tuition revolving dime, allows us to equip that particular building and or the former MS bar, get the equipment that we need and tools that we need for that particular concentration on the grants dime, not the school's dime. And could that allow us to then leverage the money that we have internally, which is some of the our tuition revolving money, earmark that for the horticulture people, whether it's equipment and or the building or the, the building rebuild. The executive office of education, they did confirm that makes sense to them. Uh, we applied for the Campana Animal Program a couple of years ago. We weren't approved for the skills capital grant, so a lot of that homework has already been done. So back to the administrative team who will have very little hours on campus between now and July 13th will be a less of a lift to get that grant done submitted than it would be to try to reinvent the wheel with a horticulture program. So it makes sense there. I was reminded that this particular grant, we could apply up to two programs for this particular grant. So while the main focus, and this evening I'll, there's a motion on uh, at this evening's meeting, I will be advocating for the board to vote for us to apply for this particular grant for the animals. But we can apply some of the money to a second program. So our vision would be to apply, also include horticulture in the grant. So we already mentioned how the state's trying to help us out with the zero term order. But there may be other large ticket items that we don't have that would normally be eligible for a skills capital grant. 
hypothetically, a skid steer. Hypothetically, uh, some other large piece of equipment that we floss or that we need. So that's what we're looking at that particular room. That makes sense. <clears throat> so hopefully, you've not killed two birds with one stone, but we can use that money, leverage it towards the animals, the trees up money to help them support it. Sure they <clears throat> so that's that current grant. The next grant that's on the table is coming down the pipeline, probably be uh, opened up later this summer. It'll be an early fall award timeline. Is an even larger grant, again, through the skills capital grant model. They'll be awarding grants between two and a half and five million dollars. This grant is slightly different than the grant I just referenced. The one I just referenced is up to 30% towards facility upgrades. This new one, the two and a half to five million, we can allocate up to 70% towards facility upgrades. The main focus with this new grant is facility upgrades. Their idea is uh, they're going to award this money to vocational schools in order to increase their footprint, increase the capacity so we can take on more students. Uh, that's what they want, want us to do with this particular grant. So, I'm sure we'll be applying for this grant, okay? And uh, keep that one in mind as we get later into some of these notes, okay? So, if we go for this grant, how can we use it to expand that, you know, that current footprint? I'm thinking out loud, we, we sort of pre talked horticulture over the last couple of years, there's multiple concentrations of horticulture, how do we expand and maybe have another classroom, have another, another instructor. There might be ways to look at the ag cluster, you can maybe get the entire ag cluster down back so they're all together. What does that look like in order for us to expand past uh, animal science? I think it's a no-brainer, we've been talking about that, by adding to the animals, that increases capacity by having more students on campus. So, uh, right now, that's the near term, some potential revenue sources without tapping into other topics. <coughs> right now. So, questions from the subcommittee? There's a lot of info. Tim, any updates you want to share on insurance? No, we're, just, we're in hold patent for the demo until they, they clear it. I'm not they have to give me time on the One, let's talk about the demo. The demo right now, the quote we have is to take down the back garage, the office, and James, your classroom. Okay. Uh, the front garage, park, your classroom, the head house, the greenhouse, would all be standing. The question remains, do we keep the current slab in place, or do we pull out the slab? My personal recommendation, if I have a study, would be to pull it out. Pull the slab out. I know that forces our hand, it will increase the cost a little bit, uh, but it provides us that flexibility to rebuild. Even if we decide to simply rebuild what we already have, at least it gives us a new foundation, no pun intended, to build from. Uh, if we decide to move in a bigger direction, that we want to revamp the, the whole program, at least the slab is already out. We have the contract interest in the building now. I think we've saved money in the long run if we pull it out now, rather than down the road deciding, oh, we should have pulled it out, let's pull it out down the road. So, that's one decision we have to make as a board uh, is to authorize us to say yes, uh, let's pull the slap out. So, you know, um, when we built the, the building up in Leeds, we had to get a, a variance from the boss and not put our oil separator in there. We told them we were in some parking equipment there as soon as the for the day. But, so they really let us slide on that. I would think here, once you start rebuilding, if you try to build in that footprint, they're going to hold it to the cold. So you have the, that back garage, you know, and you have oil separator. So you dig up most of that. I remember you were there with uh, me. Do you recommend you pull the slab out? Do you recommend it? Well, I, I go with the $10 million. That's exactly what you want. Huh? We're getting it. That's good. Lay the ground. Good. Any questions about the so far the alleged money? Not the alleged money, but the available money. So, to try to tie all of this in and give the subcommittee a basic overview of what we may have to to use for potential rebuild. If we got the full one and a half, this on the next page, if we get the full one and a half million for the building insurance, if we get the full equipment reimbursement for the uh, from the insurance company, that's that 238, I'm assuming some of that 238 we have to use to buy some new equipment. Okay, so we can't apply the entire 238 to the building. So in this particular slide, I said 100,000. If we could find other revenue sources, other, other donations, where we could save some money on that particular insurance check and apply 100000 towards the building. Again, I'm throwing a number out there. The next line here, that 450000 
That is the grant that I just referenced that where we could apply that for the Copana analysts. And up to 30% of that grant, we could apply towards facility upgrades. Uh, what would that amount be? I'm being conservative, but approximately 450,000 of that grant, even though it's going towards Copana animals, we might go free up tuition revolving money in that same amount of 450,000 we could apply for the actual building. So trying to be conservative there. The skills capital grant in the, in the fall, that larger grant, where 70% of the, the grant could be applied towards facility upgrades. Again, trying to be conservative. Ballparking 2.1 million of that one particular grant could be applied to facility upgrades. That's a total of 4.15 million. Okay. Simply through insurance in the current and upcoming skills capital grants, I think we could try to rely on approximately $4.1 million. Okay. Ballpark, nothing set in stone. That does not include probably subcommittees on the email from Senator Cumberford. Uh, she is writing uh, an economic bond bill. Uh, there's no dollar amount attached to that particular bond bill. I haven't seen any amounts from the, the Senate. Uh, but the <coughs> length of the potential at the State House looking at an economic bond bill that may help the school. I'm not even assuming we, we get it. Yeah. Fundraising is a whole other topic. I put a question mark there. Again, we, we're receiving donations. Do we want to go down the road of a, a more formal fundraising initiative? I know talking to both of you, Mark and James, there's groups out there that may want to help. Okay? I sort of lump them into that fundraising category, so that, that private donor category. Uh, do we want to tap into that? We'll talk about that in a little while. And then other services. So again, I think as a group, we can safely say we can anticipate maybe four million or so, give or take, through insurance and skills government. So what does that get us? What do we get for four million? There's three options as an administrative team we've been toying with, and this is why we, we asked Rick to call this property subcommittee. There's three options as an admin team we would accept any of these three options. I have my personal biases, and I'm sure most of us have our personal biases. I'm sure the two instructors have their own personal biases as well. But uh, it's what is the best option within the realm of what can be financially uh, afforded. So I just want to briefly outline these and then open up to the team's discussion. Option one is to simply rebuild what was damaged. And I mean specifically that back garage, the instructor's office, in that one classroom. Okay, just simply rebuild that. We keep the front garage, keep Mark's classroom, keep the head house, obviously keep the greenhouse. Right now the greenhouse is not moving. Okay, right now the assumption is the greenhouse is staying. Looking at that rebuild, I have listed, thank you to Tim, about 2,900 square feet. In talking to the Executive Office of Education, they're telling me to assume to budget construction costs ranging from $500 to $800 a square foot. That's based on current building. So to do the math, that's a 1.4 to 2.3 million dollar project to simply rebuild what we had done. So the point is, the insurance money alone may cover it; it may not cover it, which is sad to say. Which may mean we have to dip into the skills capital grants anyhow to simply rebuild what we lost. That's option number one. The last bullet there: it does not address any of these other existing building issues that we have. If we haven't taken a field trip down there, I mean, Tim, I'm going to rattle off a couple of things. If you walk between the greenhouse and James's your classroom, the, the boy of the room area, okay, sticks out. There's a section of the wall where I can put my head through the wall, okay. Uh, we have roof issues down there. What What are some of the other issues we have down there, Tim, that you have to deal with? Um, two by four construction for walls. It just was, it was so many of that, so much of that building work, both buildings that you said would be a and B, they drag them over in the classroom and, and put that together. Some got built new, some were existing, but there's two sections that were changes from and that head house was for all existing outbuildings. Um, and when the state came through looked at it 15 years ago, they, they agreed that you know, it did help outlast its use. So the point is option one gets us that space back, but it doesn't solve the bigger problem that we'll have to deal with that. Option two is Let's take down E building, again, keeping the greenhouse. Rebuilding using the same existing square footage. The footprint may look different, the layout may look different, but let's, let's play with the existing square footage as the baseline. What does that get us? 
So we maintain the current greenhouse. You see the total square footage is about 6,400 square feet. That same reconstruction cost of five to $800 a square foot. That would be a rebuild of 3.2 to 5.1 million. Again, insurance doesn't even come close to covering that. If we get all of these, the skills capital grants I've already outlined, that gets us to maybe 4 million total. And you can see that simply rebuilding with the, you know, the current square footage, we might get to that point. We might not. Right? Um, so this is where I begin to lose sleep over the last couple of days. Right? Uh, but that's option two. Option two gets the space back. It's a new space. It eliminates and solves problems that we've identified with other construction issues of the building. We have a new building. But we're not necessarily looking forward to the next 20 to 40 years of the best use of that building. Uh, we're simply getting a new current space. Okay? That's option two. The last option is to, again, rebuild, but rebuild with the idea of increasing the square footage. And this is where we sit as a team, we sit with the two instructors and say, what do we want this space to truly serve in the next 20 to 40 years? Uh, what is the issue that we need to solve? You know, what is that future education that we want to offer our students? Uh, so I don't have a square footage to, to give you. I want to throw some ideas at the table and I'll open it up obviously to, to Martin James. Uh, but if we have the opportunity to truly expand, rebuild, and solve what we want to solve, what does this look like? So do we build a bigger building so we can expand horticulture? Have more horticulture instructors so we can truly have the greenhouse management, we can have the turf management, horticulture, whatever we want, truly expand horticulture. Another one is to, um, is this the time in history to centralize the ag cluster? Do we rebuild an e-building in such a way, we've already talked about the Greenfield Community College building, we're gonna renovate that. And uh, that will become sort of the most likely the related classroom for all the animal science. We have the MS barn, again, that we could potentially renovate. If e-building becomes horticulture, and hypothetically, I'm gonna throw it out there, not set in stone, what about ag mech? But if we bring the ag mech program also down back. So now all three ag programs are truly down back. What does that do for the current ag mech shop? We need to have options, we have a discussion we have to have. Yeah, what do we do for that space? And there's many options, depending on who you want to talk to. One could be it, it frees up space for our heavy heavy equipment maintenance uh, that we fired. Okay, so we have a lot of in-house maintenance on all of, all of the heavy, heavy equipment. There's no space, internal space, for that individual to do the maintenance. Do we expand the current program? Get more students into a particular program that's always uh, oversubscribed. Do we uh, revamp part of that space into a welding shop? Not necessarily a Chapter 74 welding shop, but do we centralize our welding operations in some of the other shops? Okay. Think of like a traditional school district that may have a, a computer lab. Okay. So many different classrooms may want to add, you know, have computers. Rather than having computers in each of the classrooms, you have a computer lab, classrooms go to that computer lab. There may be chapter 74 programs that deal with welding, but rather than the welding equipment in each of the shops, those shops go to a welding shop, okay, i.e. that computer lab, and handle the, the welding lessons in that particular shop which then opens up floor space in those existing shops for other, other uses. We all know we have a, a very popular evening welding program. It provides de uh, dedicated space for that particular welding That's an, an option. Uh, another option, I'm looking at Rick as a former advisory from, from Carpentry, talking about that maker space. You know, could we have a dedicated space on campus where the construction trades come together uh, between carpentry, carpet making, electrical and plumbing, and they do some common work, uh, where there's tiny houses, modular homes, so, you know, so on and so forth. That could be a space for the, for the construction cost. The point is, I just threw a lot of ideas out there, and there are many more ideas, okay? Uh, but all of that starts with, this may be an opportunity for the school, if we can figure it out, figure out the way, to financially make this work. If we take down e-building, we can build bigger. What does that look like, and what do we want it to look like? So, just to finish a couple notes, we must identify some, if we do this, potential funding sources. Again, insurance and skills capital grant is only going to get us basically a new evil. If we want bigger, we have to find other ways. Here are my concerns, some of my concerns I just want to share with the team. This evening, you're going to have a presentation from the Hilltown Health Group uh, talking about the school-based health center. 
Uh, they're going to be here this evening talking about that. We already know that we have charged them with fundraising to build that building that will be adjacent to the White House. I am meeting with them on Friday. They want to access some of our contacts, some of our networks, because chances are anybody who will be interested in participating in a fundraising initiative will already be entities who are tied to the school, which makes sense. When we made this agreement with the Hilton Health Group, we still had an e-building. This is prior to the fire. Um, so now we may need some of those same contacts to help us if we want to expand e-building. So now are we going to sort of over dip into you know, that fundraising environment if, if we're trying to use some fundraising initiatives and the Hilltown group is also contacting the same individuals with some fundraising, are we going to hurt ourselves now? Another one is that the bigger elephant in the room is D-Bill. Uh, we know d building at some point, we keep talking about it, at some point we have to de deal with d building. If we use every single resource to our uh, advantage for e-building, are we losing the opportunity for the d building we build at some point? That's a discussion. Okay? I just I put it out there. So those are my thoughts on option three. So at this point, I sort of turn it to both of you and anybody. Those are the three options as an admin team we've, we've been discussing, debating, brainstorming. And this is why we came to, you know, it's time to have a coffee session to talk about which option is even viable. I think we all know what we want, but how do we make it work? Uh, thank you, Andy, for your presentation. That was very uh, detailed. Uh, like you keep referring to what we all like to do and what we can do, those are two different realities. Uh, so I guess we have to start navigating that with all our resources and everybody wanting to reach out and help. And uh, this is starting process. Uh, I don't think we have any answers today, obviously. And uh, we need to keep working our network, keep finding out what our realities are, what are we getting from insurance, what other donations are we getting. Uh, Senator Comerford's uh, bill initiative, whatever she's working on. And a lot of people have reached out. Um, Representative Lindsay Sabadosa's reached out, and I don't know, I'm sure others have too. Um, so this is a starting point. I think uh, we need to get Mark and Jane's um, thoughts on the big picture too, and what we can uh, <clears throat> roll the dice and try to get our, our dream and get it, get a new building, get everything consolidated. My my opinion, just off the top of my head, not knowing all the facts yet, is I like the idea of consolidating things. I like the idea of creating a construction cluster. And uh, we have opportunity to hopefully take advantage of this misfortune and uh, move forward in a real positive manner. Mr. Kaling, and I concur in regards to a couple of things. One, I want to hear from the two guys that, that have to take care of this building. Uh, over the years, I built a lot of buildings and body shops and different things that. What I always did is circle myself with the people that work in regards to that. Lee I. Coker said his biggest expense walked down there on two feet every day. And the thing is that you guys are the ones for us to look at in regard to a wish list of what you see in the future here as we rebuild. Because we can picture it from our side, but will it work on your side? So the thing is that my uh, information is that I want to have you guys either a whiteboard or use your electronic means or in build a, uh, give us information as a sub subcommittee because our job is to bring it to the full board and uh, what we need on paper, we need, we need to have the, the stuff written down as you see it, we can fill in blanks with the checks. We get the money. So you uh, you bring us the wish list, and then we can try to make it into a expanded square footage. <clears throat> We're not going to put it back in the black hole. Let's put it that way. We have too much opportunity here to expand the school, to expand your workplace. Uh, this is a sales thing as well on the opposite side. 
uh, when new students are coming on board and they're looking at vocational schools and saying, where do I want to go to school? They're going to want to come here. It's going to have all the new stuff. And, and uh, so that's an asset for our school as far as public relations. That's a benefit out of, out of putting these buildings together. Uh, D-building, uh, John and I chatted for a minute when you came in. And, uh, years ago, Deb remembers that we had a meeting uh, about having the building committee from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts uh, put up a new school or part of a new school. Uh, I talked to Jack McCarthy at that time and uh, kind of made it very strong about having that left open, that no matter when we could, can we open that again? To have the state help us to build a building, to build a new school, to build a, an operation. We've got to replace the building. We know that. It's been way too long. Uh, I mean, with a school that's got 100 years under its belt, you've got to keep up with it. Timmy is uh, chewing gum and scotch tape has done a great job for years, but uh, it's come to the time of now where we have an opportunity to be able to utilize some of these funds, not just for that building, but for the campus. So the big picture, I think, is what Andy is, uh, wants for us to paint a picture and bring it to the full board. And we're just a subcommittee to do that. We're a vehicle to get it in front of the whole board. So any help that you two can, can do, uh, we respect you. You guys, you know, were there and, and you were looking from the outside when I mean, you were inside and you were helping save a school or kids. Uh, and as Amy said, you know, it's a miracle that, that this all occurred. So let's take advantage of that. And, uh, that's, that's what I have to say. Another funding source of just being totally transparent to the other thing on the table. There's regulation out there where uh, we can assess a capital assessment to our non-resident tuition bills. Uh, this was sort of being known more through Minivan when they built a new Minivan down Lexington. So we have, again, 8% of our population are non-resident students. There's no way we can go to the city towns and ask for an override vote. Uh, there's no commitment, there's no regional agreement. Uh, but there is technically a way if we wanted to go down that road, we could assess any capital assessments through the non-resident tuition. Now, obviously, politically, that could potentially cause some concerns. Uh, we have a lot of small towns that you know, send students here. So I'm not, I'm not standing here today to say this is what we need to do. I'm just putting it on the table to say this is an option. Okay? Uh, and what does that option look like? That is an option I shared, again, prior to the pandemic, when we were really hot and heavy on the new D building, talked to the legislators, I mentioned you know, the regulation that could be part of that pie. How do we fill up that pie to, to build a new D building? I've referenced that particular particular regulation. So whether we want to tap into that regulation for an e-building complex to solve this problem, we may lose that option when it comes to a D-building. Do we want to try to save that option when we're dealing with a D-building? Uh, that D-building may involve a governance discussion, uh, to be honest. I, I'm not sure how the state's going to come into that. That could be a governance model uh, discussion when it comes to D-building. So there are ways to find the money. It's a matter of how deep do we want to go to find those sources that then may impact other decisions. That's the only reason I put it up. So any, call, any idea what we keep talking about, keep talking about, Ag Tech, ballpark square footage? No. I'll just kind of just throw this up there, my own two cents. Please. That Ag Tech was built and designed and laid out for Ag Tech. So that was, you've got your welding station there, um, carpentry on the other side, and in the middle is a big oil set, you know, oil catching, right? For, for doing anything. You can just spill oil, you just put it on the drain, and it was a rare catch it. I would leave them where they are and, and use that new space if you got it for something else if you have know, It's just it's made more. Yeah. You just, you, 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 every time we try to repurpose an area, it's never quite right. Um, like build whatever you wanted down there. Well, that's a great comment, Tim. Um, but this is all part of the process is get these things out. And uh, Andy laid out a roadmap for us with his first 
brush and now we start adding fluid and uh, fine tuning the picture. Um, and Mr. Tailing's remarks about incorporating the instructors instructors is huge. I've been to a number of public school buildings and I even did <coughs> vocational way back before they tore it down and rebuilt it. And so why did they tear that building down completely and rebuild it? It really wasn't that old. And so my guess is maybe there wasn't a lot of input from the, the shop community on when that was designed and, and put together. I was just the builder. We only built what's designed and engineered. We had nothing to do with design. Um, but I see that quite often that <coughs> the, uh, the end users come in and they go, why the hell did they do this? So that's very important. We need everybody's input. I could just add something, uh, and it's all related to this, but when one of the shops that I was redoing down on Damon Road, um, I had all these senior collision repair workers, and I had a new guy that was 16 years old coming out of Swiss School on time. So the night we were designing this whole new layout, everybody went to a whiteboard and they laid it all out what they thought their mind. And then Carl Clark, that neighbor is about that interview. I said to Carl, come on up, Carl, you got to, uh, uh, no, 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 I, yes, come on, you work here, let's go. He came up. Well, what he ended up doing is we're putting in a new downdraft spray booth. Well, all the other spray booths that were in the shop were laid out south to north in that building. He went out to a whiteboard, turned everything around east to west, put a hole in the building over here, hole in the building over here, and did a drive through this way. Everybody was stunned. This 16 year old kid put that together, and everybody said, Yeah, that building is still there today, and they're still using that same system. So, what I, my point is, is your students, utilize them. Give them an opportunity to say, hey, look, at this is what we're putting together here, but you guys are gonna be in here as well as us. They may have an idea or two that you can pick up on. It's just a point. Great point. So then, as more people are involved, and that becomes a double-edged sword, too. You get too many people involved, you get too many thoughts, too many arguments, too many everything, but the, being able to balance that um, process is, is obviously a slippery slope, but the, uh, the end users, um, their, their input is key, uh, absolutely. Two thoughts I have right now. One, it seemed like that would be coming on sort of the initial thoughts with an architect, some of the conceptual ideas that we want them to come out, up with. The second one would be, and I talked to both, both the instructors and as an admin team, we keep talking about, uh, at the end of the day, we have a school year to plan for next year as well. Uh, before we know it, August will be upon us. And how do we instruct a horticulture program in the fall? How do we manage an exploratory program so we don't lose a horticulture program because there's no home for them? Uh, I think that's very important. Uh, and again, options we've talked, I think I have my own personal bias, but one would be uh, market classroom doable, okay? Could we look at the head house or something to, can we get the learning space in and what's still remaining for the time being? That's one option. One option is we spend money that we may want to apply elsewhere, but we spend money and we get some modular classrooms in here. Another option is we look at the GCC building that we want to renovate to get ready for container animals, but we delay that vision to have a temporary home for you guys. <clears throat> it's another option, okay? So the point is, these are decisions that have to happen very soon because we have to be ready and before you know it, eight weeks, nine weeks, it's, it's over. Uh, my personal feeling, at least override me on one vote, would be, can we look at the existing space in the building? to keep you guys for the, you know, for the next school year. So we continue to do the renovation project on competing animals, that doesn't slow down, and we save the money on, on the, the modular classrooms. I open up the committee, 
avenues here, Joe? I, yeah, thank you, Andy. I just want to say, from my perspective, if I'm focusing on building level stuff, <clears throat> the different phases or possibilities of the buildings, you're solving either the short-term problem today, and but or we're going to be able to solve a long-term problem tomorrow, right? So, if we don't try to figure out how to go big, then we're not going to we're not solving any long-term problems. We still need more classroom space. We still need state-of-the-art equipment. We need upgrades. We need better facilities. That's just going to be, yeah, one, half of it will be good, but the rest of it won't. Um, so I think from my perspective, if we're going to promise educational services 20, 40 years from now, then we're just going to have to revisit this in five or 10 years or, or if all we do is replace what we have. Now, I know that's an issue because we have to figure out the means and the plan. <clears throat> but I think where I sit, I'd like to see the district and with our partners try to figure out the bigger term solution that really builds something worthwhile down there. Um, that we got to have more classroom space, we can upgrade, we can have state air equipment, better facilities, consolidate programs where it makes sense. Um, and then, of course, I have to worry about the current students and making sure that we still meet their educational needs. I think we can do it. If it's planned out in phases, what happens down there? If it's a complete knockover, then I think we're going to have to figure out modular classrooms. There's some spaces that already exist on campus, like the maker space that uh, Dave Lively has in the building, and other areas that we could. But it's going to be, you know, having these gentlemen, you know, sort of Frankenstein program where it lives in multiple different areas. Even if we use the companion animal intended companion animal building. But of course, then that pushes off that potentially instead of it coming in at the end of next year, if they're living in that space while this is happening, you're really now two years plus from getting real the real companion animal program as intended. So I think from my perspective, I, I would rather see us go big and I would rather us try to figure out quality spaces that already exist without impeding some of the other goals that we have on campus. But that's my wish list. Um, I think, you know, and I, I don't want to speak for Jim, but I think that, you know, we're resilient enough that we can make anything work. Uh, we know it'll be difficult, uh, but, you know, we can make, we can make the existing classroom and headhouse work, but I think Joe's right in that if we have any opportunity at all to go big, which in my my eyes, you know, what you what you've laid out would be the the best option because we do want to expand. Um, there already was a plan to have an ag science complex, and I think that 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 vision of it would be very good for the school. Um, and as hard as it would be to make things work where we're in different areas of the school, and yeah, okay, we have to walk all the way back there to get to our equipment. We'll make it work, and the kids are willing. I'm sure the kids would be willing to do that. Um, but if there's any op any opportunity at all that we can make this long term vision come to, to fruition, that's where I would push. Because the one thing that came in my head is if we just rebuild what was there, and within ten years we we have to rebuild the other thing, the other half, and then we've lost that opportunity to, to do what's better for the school because. What you laid out, I didn't even think of some of those other opportunities um, of expanding and creating other spaces, opening up other spaces that already exist to expand the school. Uh, so that's where I would go. Um, the only other thing that, and I know I mentioned it to you because you asked was, if we were to build it all new, um, if at all possible, I would encourage that we include a new greenhouse as that one while it works, it still has its age that is showing up. We still have some issues with heating. We still have some other issues in there that would be resolved with a new facility. But either way, we can make that work if we could build around it um, for the greenhouse. Yeah, well, maybe it's possible. Again, an architect would help with that. If you want to build something big, maybe you could build it 
behind or around the part we want to keep to use for now and that becomes parking space or something down the road. So it's not impeding going big and it's not necessarily costing the school money to rent space that we need. I think that's a great point, James. Because I think if there was a way to break off the existing area, right? You've repurposed potentially the road area as building and the back spot that gets knocked down. <clears throat> and you're able to do, again, back to, you know, what I said about it can be done in phases. I think it's probably the best approach. That's a good way that it might be possible. Um, it's, and it's just rethinking the lane as is. Does the road have to stay there? Or, or you know, how, how can we shift the existing things around just because they've always been there? Well, it has to stay in that configuration. And I wouldn't want to see companion animals or other things delayed. I do, we have talked about trying to expand into the other concentrations and that would need more classroom space even in, in horticulture just as we're doing in animal science and it would need another instructor and that space would have to be ready for that. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, a uh, thought um, that hasn't come up yet. How um, important does the companion animal science uh, program and shifting and creating this other space dovetail in with the upcoming um, animal shelter building that the city's going to be building on site. I know we've had discussion in regards to that, that this would be a benefit to our students that could be part of that uh, whole process when it's up and running. So that's another moving part we have to potentially consider. There's a natural connection between those two. Do we have to have, technically, do we have to have the companion animal program up and running when the animal, animal control facility is built? Not necessarily. But I would agree with the team. But for us to delay the companion animal expansion just doesn't make sense yeah. educationally in the future of the school. So I would do everything possible to ensure that that vision continues to come to fruition. Uh, that's a good point. Technically, if we had, if we, if there's no option, if we had to slow the companion animal expansion down so we could deal with horticulture, there wouldn't technically be an impact on the animal control. So. I'd like to also mention that <clears throat> our focus during all this rebuilding process, as part of previous discussions, when the school was built initially, it was Smith Vocational Agricultural High School. The agricultural part was a big part of this building coming together. That's kind of gone away in regards to being so busy being vocational. I believe that we should not lose focus on that because we have a lot of students that just graduated that came an hour and a half each way to go to that program. The value in the importance of the architecture, I mean, the agricultural side is really important. And I think during this whole process, we shouldn't forget that, that any incorporation that we can do as part of that agricultural piece, we should definitely uh, present that. Because the Pioneer Valley is built on the agricultural piece in regards to farming all around us. And, uh, and I'm not talking to pot farmers, I'm talking to the old farmers. But it's, uh, I just think that as part of this whole process, that that should definitely be in that top 10 tier to be included in anything we do. Question I have, I'm going to turn it over to you, Tim. To talk about your vision of the architects, Dr. Joyce point, maybe in stages, okay? And as you answer that, I also want Mark and James, if you want to start putting your thinking caps on to what Joe just said, it could be a, a conversation around, is there anything that's off limits down there? As we really start to think outside the box of what this could look like and where things are, are there things that are off limits? I'm talking that storage bar next to the building. Is that sacred? Or could that be a potentially usable space if that bar came down? Is there other features down back that we can't touch no matter what because whatever. Or do we truly have a blank slate down back to 
I, I just want to have a sort of the dipstick of how people feel about that space down there, which would allow Tim working with the architect to say, everything is on the table, or no, everything's on the table but this one area, we can't touch that. I just want to hear that from the team. So, it was so about, how right. many years ago was we had Doran in here looking at MS Barn? Three that was true. Probably a year before the pandemic. So. Yeah. So, so we looked at that one building mm -hmm. in that one area of the, of the farm area. So that would have fixed that class from that spot. But if we look at the whole, from from the end of the burnt uh, forestry all the way over to the dairy barn, and, and the dairy barn is the only thing that sacred has to say, everything's up for grabs. And then decide on your forestry bill what you want for the scope, how many classrooms, how many shops. But then just have a rough layout of the rest of the area. If you do go back and do the multi-species barn one day, keep that in mind. How, how, you, how would you turn those buildings? And just have a, a, a 15, 20 year plan. So if here's an enforcement building, here's one day when you get to it, you can fix the um, MS barn, pig barn, whatever, um, cow, cow lot. Just have a, a, a bigger goal when you sit down with the architect on that whole site. But to me, the only thing that's worthwhile to keep it is a dairy barn. Okay. I think even the horse, corral and everything, oh, yeah. that, that all can be shifted and moved to other space. If the building's back there, then you end up with, you know, that, the that ability was the to... Here. That was the compost site, and yeah. uh, we just put the, that paddock up because the teacher and forestry didn't want compost up there. So, I mean, equestrian, you know, focusing on the equine is also a, a goal of ours in the next two to three years. So, I mean, even rebuilding that, but that, like, it doesn't have to live in that spot, right? So if there's a building that's built in the back where that all that is, and maybe even the home house moves again, all that now can could be up in front, front and center. You see those features as opposed to in the back. So I think it, that phases make sense if we design it that way. Comment or um, mention of an architect. Where are we with? Uh, bringing an architect on board for the big vision. I think, in my opinion, some type of uh, proposal request needs to go out just for conceptual ideas of not full-blown architectural services to, to start that process. And there's a number of them just right here locally that we could reach out to um, and that have a lot of experience in this vision. Um, I know you've been working with a certain architect, but in my opinion, I don't think he's appropriate for this big vision at this point. Yeah, we're not, not with that. We, um, um, Jones Woodset. Yes, that's a very good choice. Yeah, they work on the uh, Franklin County School. Yep. Um, and there, um, Mike Schaefer, Black High Huntley Associates. Okay, um, but that's a little more of a landscaper. No, no, he, he does, he does engineering. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> no, Jones wins. It's a good choice. Uh, DRA, Drummy, Roseanne, and Anderson, they're out of work. He's the mask. They did put them vocational, so it wouldn't be a bad idea. I, I'm just putting it out on the table as a suggestion. We probably put some type of proposal request together to get some basic conceptual services and we send it out and bring forth. We should uh, put a couple out of races. I mean, okay, great. To get, uh, you know, here, here's basically the feasibility. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, uh, what, what we're doing. So I didn't push them yet until we can actually sit down. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. We, we've got schools that have been built in this come off, uh, exit Aggie, that has a footprint that that may fit for us mm -hmm. in some ways. And they've already built it. And maybe we could look at that picture or those designers that are, had the big vision on that big brand new school that could come into this picture in this little school uh, and give us some good ideas. Yeah, absolutely. That, and that process needs to happen now. Like, when would you want to sit down with somebody? When would you want an architect on, say, like two weeks? I would say two weeks. We should make a decision, hire somebody to get this conceptual plan going. So that within two weeks when they sit here, you have enough ideas that we want to put this many shops and make this many classrooms and put all that. I, I, w I would buy into that. I don't think we have the luxury of time to wait any time at all. I, agree. I know it's going to be burdensome on everybody, and but 
I bought into this, you know, I, I ran and got elected and uh, I bought into uh, doing whatever I can to move the school forward. So I'll make myself available, uh, excuse me, I'll make myself available. Mark and James, you're the ones in the trenches looking down. Are there areas or components that we should not touch? Well, we're just, I've gone through this a number of times being here longer than Mark, is you can't make a tree overnight that you climb in. And that's a key part of what we do. And having access to those in multiple places makes it easy for the teacher to have kids doing multiple things. So there are a few trees we use you know, behind the building going you know, towards the Huey Dickinson that are mature that we use and then some we don't. Um, just because it's big doesn't mean we necessarily use it. Like there's one you can kind of see it's closest to the soccer field. It's a cottonwood tree. We don't use that to climb but that could go and wouldn't bother anybody. Well, so, yeah. Yeah. so we could easily mark those trees so you knew, everyone knew what was what. Um, I don't know about James and regards to the building, I don't have, I don't have anything that needs to say. Um, not inclined paneling. No, no, not inclined paneling alone. Uh, maybe the teacher's line. Um, but it, it's, there's certain things that we would like to see, but I'm open to a clean slate. Uh, if we can get it to work so that it's something that's going to be here and work for you know, 30, 40, 50 years um, and bring us up to the standards we need to be at because we are, our technology wise, we are kind of, we, we've been getting there, but we are not where we should be. You know, greenhouses are, have evolved quite a bit and we aren't fully there with the current greenhouse, but again, we can make it work. You know, that's easy enough to, to, to work around, but um, nothing has to stay in that building in my book. As Jim said, hard to plant mature trees or big trees. Uh, so we want to look at some of those to try and work around. Um, but, you know, in the end, to get what we need, you know, we are open to discussion on everything. I'm open to discussion on everything. I'm not going to speak for you. And I, uh, I'd like to make a suggestion or a motion. <laughs> I don't know if we need to make motions at this meeting. Um, that, um, so Tim, you, you've already sent out some requests Okay, and so you had Joan Win Jones Winsett and who else? Okay, you mentioned that, that's right. Um, I'd like to add maybe two others, Drummy Roseanne Anderson, and I, I can get together with you. And um, another one would be uh, Mount Vernon Group. I think they still exist. I did a number of school projects with them. Um, but we can talk. Um, because we can sit here and throw out these ideas all day long, but it's it's meaningless until we really, I think. It's not meaningless. It's important that we do that, but we get, like Andy suggested, we need to get this down on paper. We need to start our vision. And so when we do hire this architectural consulting team to come on board with our conceptual and feasibility study, we need to be ready to hit the ground running. I think it will help back to Senator Cumberford and potentially her work with an economic bond bill. Uh, I just recall it again, it's not long history, but Tim, you're mentioning that the redoing of the MS classroom space. At that same time, we still had uh, Senator Rosenberg and Representative Kokot still with us. And they both put in separate bond bills and they were using that particular building idea as sort of the, the framework. Uh, so I think it's easier for our state leaders to say, okay, let's get behind a bond bill that satisfies this particular project. So I think it would be nice to have some type of conceptual design. So I, I know Senator Cumberland is going to say, okay, I'm trying to get money for you, but what is this money going to be used for? Right. Right. Uh, so I, I think it is important to have something in that paper. So the question of Tim, so we can kind of put our mind on if we keep the front half of the building, would the sewer system still work for Every, the bathroom? Everything works. The bathroom is locked room. And that back room to your back door to your classroom would be next to your window. 
So, so yeah, but like the water service currently comes in through the office. I know, but I think we could, uh, I think you could still have it come here and just insulate that. Okay. Depending on how much it's under the slab. So the sewer, we assume would still work, it would be yeah. disrupted. Okay. Yeah, that was two things I was going to mention. I was, because we had discussed the water and where it comes into the office and stuff. So if we were to demolish everything back, including the pad, how is that going to affect the front for our future use? And then the other thing I was just going to point out is um, if we were looking at rebuilding what we have, um, either what was damaged or the whole part on that footprint, what is existing really is not conducive for our teaching. It really doesn't work. I mean, it was piecemeal together, but for what our needs are, it, if we could redo it, it could be much more, much better for teaching the students and making things work. I will, as a good segue, back to my charge to present this evening. Uh, I'll still plan on offering the three options to the full board. I'm not hearing anybody, please don't argue with me. I'm not hearing anybody say option one is the best option, which is simply be building the existing. I'm not hearing that. <laughs> what I'm hearing is we all want option three mm -hmm. and, and solve the big problem when we have this chance in history. That's our goal, that's our priority. Worst case scenario, we may have to be stuck with option two if there's no other funding sources. We don't want that. But even within that, can we take the square footage but redesign it in such a way to better serve your needs? Right. Is it safe for me to share that this evening? To say that really option three is our best option. Worst case scenario, option two, but still redesign option two to try to better serve your needs. It doesn't solve a bigger picture. Rick, do you want to? You said two weeks you wanted to do this. I, if everybody can buy into that, I think we need to go. I mean, uh, 28 at the end of this month. Pardon? The last Wednesday of this month. Okay. 28. Yes. Yeah, we have a Yeah. A lot of stuff. Yeah. So will we. Yeah, that's oh, true. Right. All works. So What's your answer, Gerard? Maybe that's that one. That one's in here. The week of yeah, fourth July happens to be a Monday. That week, I think, would be a good time. So, and what's our potential board of trustees meetings on the 19th? Is that right? The 19th? That's going out too far. So, what days work? So, we try to work with a Tuesday and we keep the status quo. Is that on July 5th? That won't work. Now, summertime, so. you're going to meet with the architect prior to that, and then meet there, or that, that'll be the meeting. I'm just confused. That'd be the jumping off. There. Right. right. I agree with what Tim just said. That'd be. Um, I would, that would be, we've, we've, we're going to reconvene, we're going to have some wish list items, some visions, hopefully we'll have selected an architectural consulting firm, we'll discuss the selection to move forward, how's that sound, or should we have them on board at that meeting? Uh, why, why couldn't we have them on board at that meeting? And then just throw some ideas, give them up. Plan for the back and the site, and then get them going to work. But just before I have a pretty good idea what you want, how many, how many classrooms, how, what are we like it's, it's like when we do this for school, right? And it's just like we did have a with a bunch of meetings. We have, you know, we right, right, right. Now, how's this piece being forestry or culture all together? Sure, we and it's crystal. Well, depending on when it is, it will determine if it's this fiscal year. We're looking at the general staff, just like we're not super blocked. So I think we'll have to see if we'll start spending funding from the fire. So we'll just have to have, hopefully, we'll have a better idea by then what money, what funding we have here. So I think that works. To determine where it's going to be. And the last item we did down there was who was just under $5,000. We may not have to sign any contracts that soon, but just start the process. What time are you looking after that? 
did you say otherwise? It is it is it is and do, does Tim still have that concept? Yeah. Of, uh, I do. As the animal science? Not the one that we designed to 3.1 million, the larger concept. So what was the building? So the building of the animal science was still Because we get that for our children level? Yeah. But I was like, yes, definitely. Yeah. So as far as the time that you think, yeah, I don't want to speak for the whole team here. Uh, does it make more sense? Are, are we more flexible around a time? If you work with the potential architect, you say we want to have a meeting on July 6th. What time works for the architect? Yeah. And we can have that. You mean time of day? Yeah. 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 The later the day, better. Because I, 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 well, I, I have, we should probably have one meeting. I think and then we'll potentially yeah. uh, be out. And, Fitchburg, African is a project brought by the job. The earliest of the blue black in that, or is it too late? Later, late this is possible. So you you figure it out. I'll, I'll, I'll do what I have to do. All right? So we're playing on the sixth, time to be determined. Deb's going to provide copies of the former AG science complex plan so you can kind of review that. If people can be prepared for the July 6th meeting with sort of that wish list, you know, what are we hoping to see uh, included in that particular facility would be great. Other topics that we're forgetting? Comments people want to make? Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir.